show you a beautiful sight here. Here we have bunch berries, and back in there is a wild blueberry. Here's another one. Little blueberries everywhere. Good, uh, good little breakfast here. Bunch berries are all right, but I prefer blueberries. There's a good amount of blueberries right there. Come on. <laughs> this is about as good as you're going to get in terms of nutrition right there. These that grow out in the wild are going to have a lot better nutrition than the factory produced stuff that you get in the store. Um, anything that grows out here that God grew is going to be a lot healthier than what man can grow in the store. So, I always try to encourage people to get out here and enjoy God's creation. Now for the good part. Very good. Amazing having wild blueberries like that. So, I want to talk for a minute or two here up on top of beautiful Sugarloaf Mountain about um, the subject of rule of law versus majority opinion, uh, also known as what went wrong with America. When we abandoned the Constitu Constitutional Republic that this nation was founded as, um, that's when things started to go downhill. Very much the same as when Christianity abandoned the King James Bible, the law of the Lord, and started to go with feelings. I prefer this. I like that. Um, I don't prefer that. I don't, pre well, your preferences really don't mean anything. It's what does God want? What does God's word say? That's what's important. But when people started to abandon the rule of law and went with the majority opinion, uh, things start to fall apart. Why? Because the Bible teaches that every man in his best state is altogether vanity. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. Then why would you base things on majority opinion instead of rule of law? Um, you see, a lot of the founding fathers here in America, they were into Masonic enlightenment. They weren't really into uh, scripture per se, um, and, but they still understood the importance of religion in a just society, the purpose of moral codes and morality. And the atheists come along and they say, we have to abandon moral codes. We have to say, uh, there is no thus saith the Lord. It's just kind of go with the majority opinion. We're going to have, you know, communism that's brought in where everybody gets the same pay and everything else. We're all equals and things, which is nonsense because the leaders don't get the same pay as the people. And uh, they're certainly not equal to the rest of the people out there. Communism is a joke. But see, it's again this thing of the majority. Let's go with the majority. And a lot of talk goes out there with the, the Donald Trump stuff and whatever else, you know. Um, how do we make America great again? Well, there's only one way to do it, and that is to bring back the rule of law. Uh, well, right now we have illegal aliens. Some estimates say as many as 40 million of them. Um, think about that. They are here illegally. Um, well, if they're here illegally, then what do you do? You bring back the rule of law and you say, um, no, you can't be here. Um, I went to, I've been in Costa Rica twice and Honduras once in the past. So I've been to other countries and you know what? They, uh, they didn't coddle me down there. They didn't just say, oh, hey, don't worry about it. We'll try to speak English for you and we'll give you money when you arrive here and whatever else. No, sink or swim, buddy. <laughs> if you want to order anything at a store or talk to anybody, you better try to speak Spanish when you're down there. 
that's the way it is. That's the way a smart country would do things. We have these illegals coming here and they're complaining because the four-star hotel food isn't very good. That's ridiculous. That is very wicked. That is not a good system. Oh, but the majority, that, <laughs> see, the majority opinion, not a good thing. Um, again, law is supposed to be logical. It's not supposed to be emotional. And you get a lot of people and they say, oh, think of the poor refugees and think of what they have to go through in their country. And after all, we should just let them come here and we shouldn't speak, you know, poorly to them. And we should, you know, give them everything that they need and whatever else. And, and uh, you know, uh, white people have privilege, but people from other countries are, they, they don't. And we, so we have to give them privilege. Well, if white, if white privilege is bad for white people, why would you give privileges to illegal aliens that come here. That doesn't really make any sense. Um, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If, you know, white privileges messed up white people, then don't give privileges to these illegals. Doesn't make much sense. And uh, a lot of churches out there, in fact, every church I've ever been to, they'll get into the thing of preaching Romans chapter 13, and they'll preach one through three. They don't preach verses 4 and 5 where it defines the kind of rulers that you're supposed to submit to. Um, yes, rulers are ministers of God, but it's to thee for good. Uh, the kind of biblical rulers that you're supposed to say, I follow that guy, they are doing good things. They aren't doing bad things. And so, this uh, watch out for the whole Romans chapter 13 thing. Well, we're supposed to submit to the government and we you know, can't tell you who to vote for and whatever there's no scripture saying that you that a church can't tell you who to vote for none at all what it that is is that's um the irs code 501c3 in order for them to maintain tax exemption they have to say that they can't tell you who to vote for that's also why you go to these church buildings and they say and now by the power invested me in me by the state of whatever wherever you're at i now pronounce you man and wife whoa hold on a second here the power pronoun uh, pronounced by the state of where you're at? Uh, wouldn't it be the power of the Lord Jesus Christ if they're Christian? Hmm. The power invested in me by God? No, no, it's not that. Uh, it's not power invested by God. It's the uh, power by the state. So that's a problem. I'm up here now on the very pinnacle of uh, Sugarloaf Mountain. Turn around here. See that really big mountain out there in the distance? Right up this way. It's Mount Katahdin. Um, and you know what? There's a law there with that mountain. Nobody's going to remove that mountain. It's a fixed landmark. And that should bring you comfort. You don't have to all of a sudden come up here and say, well, that, what happened to Mount Katahdin? Well, it, uh, it's gone now. It no longer identifies as a mountain. <laughs> it's now uh, turned into a river and gone downstream or something. It's now identifying as a as a minnow or something. Or you know, it, we should want the rule of law. Again, right now we have these stores in America. A lot of them have been forced to shut down. Why? Because it's no longer illegal to steal. It's only punishable if you go to a certain level. If you're not at that certain level, well then, you know, $900 or less, so it's not really a felony anymore. Um, not a real problem. Uh, that's wrong. That's very sinful. It shouldn't be that way. You know, there was a big move years ago about, among the atheists, and they were going out and they were attacking the Ten Commandments and any place where they could find monuments to the Ten Commandments. Oh, we have to take that down. We have to have separation of church and state. Um, no, you don't. Uh, what our founding fathers here in America did not want is they didn't want a, a government-controlled church like the Roman Catholic Church, where you have the two swords, the temporal and the spiritual. That's what our founding fathers didn't want. Even the Enlightenment Freemasonic guys, they realized, you know, that's a bad idea. If you want to have things of liberty and freedom and justice for all, um, you can't have a church that says you will believe that this wafer and this wine is the literal flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. And if you don't believe that, you're a heretic and we'll burn you at the stake. 
done millions of times to people who disagreed with the Catholic Church. That's why there was the Dark Ages. And uh, that is a historical fact. It's not anti-Catholic bias. Um, there's plenty of books to prove that. Martyr's Mirror, Fox's Book of Martyrs. And of course the Catholics will always counter. They'll say, well, the Protestants did it too and things. Yeah, because Protestants came out of Roman Catholicism. But uh, Bible-believing Christians, we were always hunted down as heretics. And we would go from one place to another and run. And um, because you see, but we would never submit. Because you see, we believed in the rule of law. And the law being God's law. You're not going to tell me that I have to come and be part of your church system. Your church system is not supported by scripture. No thank you, I don't want anything to do with it. See how that works? So, I apologize if there's some wind noise here. Top of a mountain, you know, what can you do? But, um, so how do we get our country back? Well, at this point in time, uh, there's a lot of division. Division leads to war. Uh, war leads to killing. Killing leads to people experiencing sorrow and suffering, which can lead to people saying, hey, you know what? I think we need to bring back some rules here and some laws. Um, instead of just having it be a sort of an Old West, uh, the fastest gun rules. Um, no, we actually need to start to bring in some law and order here. Uh, what was it that civilized the West? Law and order. Well, here comes the Texas Rangers. Well, here's the outlaw, Billy the Kid, or the outlaw, the, the James Gang, or, or whatever else. Law and order shows up, and um, people say, yeah, you know what? You can no longer go out and drink on the streets. Hey, uh, don't go out in the street and start shooting your guns at things and houses and buildings and whatever else. We don't want that here. Um, I don't believe in any kind of laws against private gun ownership, but there needs to be laws about the appropriate use of them. Um, if you commit a crime with a firearm, then you get charged. And again, well, we'll, we'll just make uh, laws that take away people's guns. We'll, we'll take away anything dangerous. Well, then I guess I shouldn't be up here on top of a mountain like this walking around carrying a camera and I could fall down this steep rock thing here, you know, and uh, you know, I didn't even have breakfast yet and I'm wearing shoes that have pretty bad tread up here and, and uh, I mean, what else could there be? I didn't bring my glasses up and you know, oh, it's just terrible. You know, you can't pass laws to dictate all kinds of things like that. What you have to do is you have to punish criminals. Um, Again, Romans chapter 13. Let me get my Bible out here and I'll read that to you because I think it's very important. Um, right now we have a lot of tyranny in America. And I'm kind of shocked that a lot of people that call themselves patriots would stand for these uh, two goofballs that are being run for president right now in America. An, an actor and, a, and then an old man that uh, needs to be in a retirement home someplace. You can figure out who I'm talking about there with both. But uh, both of these men, they took away a lot of our freedoms. Even here on YouTube, I'm not even allowed to say certain things that I believe in because uh, it would violate policies. Well, then how do I have First Amendment rights? Hmm. I mean, I have First Amendment rights out here. I get it. Uh, but uh, certain websites don't appreciate First Amendment rights. But Romans chapter 13, beginning in verse 1, my little pocket Bible here. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. But look at this, verses 3 through 5. See, they don't stop at verse 2 a lot of times. But you have to define what these rulers are. How does it work? Bible says here in verse 3, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. A good ruler should praise people that are good. He should look out at his citizens or subjects or whatever you want to say, and he should say, Hey, you're doing a great job out there. Hey, good job. Nicely done. That's what a good ruler will do. Verse 4, For he is the minister of God to thee for good, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. 
for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Um, <clears throat> hey, I'm going to obey the laws when I'm driving back or driving to the office today. I'm going to obey the laws. Why? Because I don't want to disobey the laws and end up in trouble with the police. Oh, the police are just evil. They're terrible. Oh, not when they're doing right. I thank the Lord for the police. Um, I'm glad that there's somebody out there to maintain the rule of law. To say, hey, you know what? There's a bump in the night. There's a bad thing going on. There's some guy that's out there shooting up a bunch of people or doing evil things. Um, call the police. Get the police in there. Let them handle it. Let them take care of that whole situation. Praise the Lord. I don't want to live in an anarchy type of a society. Um, and those who do, they will find very quickly that their anarchy, their without rule of law, will quickly devolve back into a system where they need rule of law again. Um, well, no, we're just going to have the majority of voting on things. Uh, you know, if it's a popular movement, then uh, that will become the new normal. No, <laughs> there needs to be rule of law. Rule of law should be backed up by science. Scientifically provable things. Not oppositions of science falsely so called. That's very dangerous as well. But you need to have things that have been tested and proven and have been proven not just recently, but for hundreds of years. Establish that rule. Establish the law. And then you stand by it. You abide by those laws. That's the only hope for this country. Um, to get back to the rule of law. And the Bible is a big part of that. And um, we should have the Ten Commandments back out there again. And um, if you're an atheist and you're truly open-minded and logical, um, there's a lot about the Ten Commandments that's actually pretty good. And uh, I did a whole study on that. The Ten Commandments for Atheists, I think is what it was called. Getting into the whole thing. And um, very important. Um, but, you know, the funny thing is about law, if you refuse it, if you say, I reject this concept of absolute law and absolute authority and absolute truth and everything else, you can only reject it for so long before it goes into a chaotic situation. And all of a sudden, you're running back to law again. All of a sudden, you say, we need to pass some laws here to protect ourselves. So it's kind of a funny situation. So you can come out here and you can reject all of this. You can just say, I don't believe this was created by God. I don't believe there is a God. This is all just random chance, just evolution is all that this is. Just billions of years of death and suffering to produce all of this beauty out here. You can do that, but eventually your little system's going to break down. Unless you just completely surround yourself with what man makes. Live in the city, don't ever come out here, don't get confused by the truth. Um, and just say, well, you know, we can just continue to question authority and continue to say, you know, yea, hath God said. Uh, we'll just attack the Bible and deny the Bible and whatever else. It'll catch up to you eventually. It will. You'll get to a point where you'll say, you know what? Maybe I should think about God. Maybe I should consider some things uh, outside of my little limited sphere here, my little city block that I live on. Maybe there's a bigger world out there. You know what I mean? Um, maybe we need rule of law. Maybe we shouldn't just say, you know what? Hey, anything goes. Uh, Communist China wants to come over here and say, let's destroy this mountain that I'm standing on right now because there could be some good metals in this mine or good metals in the mountain here. Sure. Oh, those beautiful lakes and everything over here. Ah, let's just exploit it. We can use it for whatever. You say, well, no, we can't do that. How are you going to stop it? Well, the majority opinion, the majority of people would be against it. Or you could actually have law, rule of law to protect things. Um, again, the United States, we had the whole uh, Nuremberg trials and the Geneva Convention and all the other things. We're going to pass laws to uh, protect people from war crimes. And then America has gone out and disobeyed those very laws time and time again. Such hypocrisy. But uh, that'll be it for my little rant here on top of the mountain. Um, have to get back down the hill here and 
the mountain, <laughs> climb back down all of this, get to the office. So just absolutely breathtaking up here. Beautiful spot. Really hope that everybody's enjoyed it. So uh, put myself in the center here like this so I can get the video links on both sides and put some things up here at the end for you to watch. And uh, thank you to everybody out there, of course, as always, for your prayers, for your support, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.